The book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 27. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, O oh, thou that art situate at the entry of the sea, which art a merchant of the people from many isles, thus saith the Lord God, O oh, Tyrus, Thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. They have made all thy ship boards of fir trees, of sanir. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make masts for thee. Of the oaks of Bashan. Have they made thine oars? The company of the Asherites have made thy benches of ivory, brought out of the isles of Chitin. The Asherites, who's that? Those are the Assyrians. So the Assyrians are making them ivory benches. Why? Because they probably got a lot of elephants over there. How else would they do that? They have indigenous elephants. They don't need to make these people, these seafaring people, anything. Because they get all the stuff. So that must mean there's elephants living amongst these Assyrians at this time. The oh, fine linen with broidered work from Egypt was that which thou spreadeth forth to be thy sail. Wow. That sound fancy. Blue and purple from the Isles of Alicia was that which covered thee. Ooh. Blue and purple are the most expensive guys. Because they're the hardest to make. I think mostly people made them out of shellfish. That's what comes to my mind. I think they make them out of sea urchins, personally. I'm watching this show. And they're showing how they get sea urchin meat and how it's very expensive. And they have to crack open the sea urchin. But then they leave the whole part up, out about what they do with the rest. And in fact, um, I think to this day, that's how they make indigo purple dye. The finest. But see, they just leave that part out. They're, they're trying to say... That's the only valuable part. And I think they have some um, type of neurotoxin type features, if I'm not mistaken. Who knows? The inhabitants of Zidon, right? There's our Sidon, but they spell it Zidon. And Arvad, I don't know what that is. But it's very close to those places. The inhabitants of Zidon in Arvad were thy mariners. Thy wise men, O Tyrus, that were in thee, were thy pilots. Pilots of the four winds that fill my sail. The ancients of Gabal and the wise men thereof were in thee, thy caulkers. All the ships of the sea were their mariners were in need to occupy thy merchandise. They of Persia and of lewd and of foot. Right? Whose son is that? Foot. P H U T. Egypt. Were in thine army. So he's got Assyrians, lewd, and food all in their army at Tyrus in Zidon. Thy men of war, they hang the shield and helmet in thee. They set forth thy comeliness. The men of Arvad with thine army were upon thy walls round about, and the Gamadines were in thy towers. They hang their shields upon thy walls round about. They have made thy beauty perfect. 
Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches, with silver, iron, tin, and lead. They traded in thy fairs. Javan, Tubal, and Meshech, they were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. So are we talking about, is this, it's not Tubal Cain, right? That was, I think, like Cain's, I don't know. Um, I have to look up these three because it sounds, they sound very familiar. But what it's telling you here is that they're slave owners. He traded in, they traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. So these are slave owners, these three here. Then, okay, they, the house of Togarma, traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen and mules. Cameron looked that one up too. These are horse people. The men of Dedan were the mer thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They bought, they brought thee for a present horns of ivory and ebony. Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the wares of thy making. They occupied in thy fairs with emeralds purple and broidered work and fine linen and cor coral and agate. Judah and the land of Israel, they were thy merchants. They traded in thy market wheat of Minith and Panag and honey and oil and balm. Damascus was thy merchant in the multitude of the wares of thy making. For the multitude of all riches in the wine of Helbon and white wool. Dan also and Javon going. So there's that tribe of seafaring Dan. Dan also and Javon going to and fro. Occupied in thy fairs. Bright iron. So they're doing iron works. This tribe of Dan. It says it right there, specifically iron. Cassia and Calamus were in thy market. I don't know what that is. Um, Calamus, I have to look those up. I don't know what either of those words even mean. Are they flowers? Is it some type of copper? Dedan was a merchant in precious clothes for chariots, Arabia, and all the princes of Qadar. They occupied with thee in lambs and rams and goats. In these were thy were they thy merchants. You see, Tyrus is going down, and these are all the people gonna be affected. The merchants of Sheba and Rama. Isn't that what we're hearing about in the news? Rama. Sheba is Ethiopia, right? Because that's where the Queen of Sheba hailed from. They were thy merchants, they occupied in thy fairs with chief of all spices and with all precious stones. And gold. That's the first time you hear that even though we know before they got it from Tarshish and Ophir. No, we're not, I don't know about Tarshish, but I believe that's near, it's kind of, well, it's like the southern part of Spain, maybe. Haran and Cana and Eden, the merchants of Sheba, Asher and Shalmad were thy merchants. Look, they say Eden. That's weird, right? They are mentioning a lot of places. 
These were thy merchants in all sorts of things, in blue clothes, embroidered work, and in chests of rich apparel, bound with cords and made of cedar among thy merchandise. The ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy market, and thou wast replenished and made very glorious in the midst of the seas. Thy rowers brought thee into great waters. The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. Thy riches and thy fares, thy merchandise, thy mariners and thy pilots, thy caulkers and the occupiers of the merchandise and all thy men of war that are in thee and in all thy companies which is in the midst of thee shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. So you're going to drown everybody oh, when they're already out in the sea. The suburbs shall shake at the sound of the cry of thy pilots and all that handle the oar, the mariners, and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships. They shall stand upon the land and shall cause their voice to be heard against thee and shall cry bitterly, and shall cast up dust upon their heads. They shall wallow themselves in the ashes, and they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee, and gird themselves with sackcloth, and they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. And in their wailing they shall take up a lamentation for thee, and lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When thy wares went forth out of the seas, thou filledest many people. Thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas, in the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all the company in the midst of, the, of thee shall fall. All the inhabitants of the isles shall be astonished at thee, and their kings shall be sore afraid. They shall be troubled in their countenance. The merchants among the people shall hiss at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt be any more.